In this video we're going to extend our discussion of production and cost into talking about perfectly competitive markets and what happens there. And basically what we've been assuming when we've looked at cost tables such as the one that you see right here, we've already looked at these numbers in a previous video where you have quantity, total cost, fixed cost, variable cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost, average total cost, and marginal cost. We used this table and graphs of the marginal cost, average variable cost, and the average total cost in red to answer the question, if the market price was blank, then we, we give a price like $600, $200, $100, $400, what would the business do in the short run? And then we also talked a little bit about what would change in the long run. For example, uh, just to get us warmed up again here, if the market price was $500, then the business would not want to produce units where the marginal cost, the green, is higher than the price of $500. And if we look at the cost table here, marginal cost of the eighth unit is $507. So if the price was $500, the business would not want to produce the eighth unit. They would stop at the seventh unit and then focusing in on what's going on in the seventh unit, the price is higher than average total cost and so the business would be making a profit. And we went through all that before. Now, in the long run, we, dis we already discussed that if businesses are making a profit, then businesses, sorry, entrepreneurs who are not in this business are going to look and say, I need to get into that business. And we also know from supply and demand that as more firms enter an industry, it causes the price to fall. And so in the long run, the price would drop from 500 down to something around eh, 380 or so, down to the minimum average total cost. And again, we can go back and look at um, this column here, and we can see that the minimum average total cost is at $390. And so once the price gets around $390, there is no more incentive for people to enter the industry. And so this is the long run equilibrium where businesses are not making economic profits. Now, since we've already talked about that, I want to take this one step further. Now, when we talk about this market price, where does it actually come from? That's what we're going to analyze today. And so what we've got to recognize is, as we did before, when you recognize that businesses will not want to produce units where the marginal cost is higher than the price. Basically what you can do is look at any price and to figure out the quantity that the business, the individual one small firm will want to supply, they're going to take that price and look at their marginal cost in their table and they're going to say at a price of 500, I will produce the seventh unit, but I will not produce the eighth unit. And so basically this is why in economics we say that the supply curve for a firm is the same as the marginal cost curve up to a point. Now there, there are some differences that we'll explore in just a minute, but we can know for sure that if the price was $507, the business would produce the eighth unit. So that marginal cost and that quantity form a point on one firm's supply curve. That marginal cost of 585 and that quantity of nine is another point on the supply curve of the firm. Because if the price was 585, the quantity supplied would be nine. And so we can view this marginal cost curve as the supply curve except remember the shutdown rule there comes a point where the price gets so low that the business would not want to produce anything they would want to shut down and produce zero for the day 
Now, if you remember the shutdown rule, the shutdown rule says if the price gets below average variable cost, the best thing the firm can do is shut down and produce zero units. So what is the price where we know that this business will shut down and produce zero units? It's going to be right around here. Let me use this little black bar here so we can visualize it. It's going to be the price where the minimum of the average variable cost occurs, somewhere right around 220, 230. Now, since we have the table up here, we can verify exactly what the minimum of average variable cost is. Just focus in on this average variable cost column. And the lowest average variable cost ever gets is $238.33. And so the supply curve for one firm is actually the same as the marginal cost down to a price of... So how can we use this information that one firm's supply curve is the same as marginal cost down till we get to a price of $238.33. But then what happens is the quantity supplied will be zero all the way uh, for any price below $238.33. Well, what we can actually do is look at the entire market. And that's what I want to do is, is show you how we can use the information about one small firm in order to learn about the entire market. And here's basically how we do this. Now, in order to keep the numbers simple, I am going to assume that the entire market is 100 firms to keep the math very easy. So entire market of 100 small, perfectly competitive firms. Now, all we have to do is ask ourselves, just like we were saying before, if at a price of 650, each little firm would produce 10 units, then if there were are 100 identical firms, each producing 10 units, how many units will we have? Well, 1,000 units in the entire market at a price of $650. All right, so we have one point on our market supply curve. Now, if the price went down to $585, if each firm would want to produce 9 units, then 100 firms times 9 units would be 900 units. And so we have another point on our supply curve, $585, 900 units. And so let me copy that down here. That's about 585, and that's about 900 units. And we just keep going like this, plotting marginal cost and quantity, except it's marginal cost and 100 times quantity since we have 100 firms. And so at $507, we would have 8 units. And so that's 800, okay, right about there. And 468, and I'm just going to plot the rest of these points, and I'll be back in a sec. All right, so I plotted the rest of the marginal cost points uh, on with quantities times 100 down until $247 and 4 times 100 or 400 units. Now I stopped there because I want you to see what happens at this point. Remember we said that if the price gets below $238.33 then the quantity supplied by each firm will drop to zero and this will happen in the whole market too. If all firms are making zero, no one will make anything. And so at this point, we have to be careful that it's true that when the marginal cost goes, sorry, the price, market price, if it got below $247, the firms would not produce four units anymore, say $246. Each firm would produce three units and each firm will produce three units down to a price of 238.33. And so we have one more point to graph, and that is a price of 238.33 and quantity of 300 units in the market. So I've got that one more point there, and now I'm just going to connect those last two dots because that's as far down as that
supply curve goes. Now you could just put a dotted line here because any price below 238.33 and the quantity supplied in the market will go immediately to zero. And so we can we can go ahead and do that if you like. And let me just put a little straight line going right there all the way over to zero. And that completes our market supply curve. Now, what can we do now that we have this market supply curve? The answer, any, everything that we did before, plus a little bit more. For example, we can see that it looks like the market supply, cur uh, uh, supply curve intersects this market demand curve, which we assume that someone gave us, at about a $400 equilibrium price and about a $600 equilibrium quantity. And so I'm going to come back with a second part and show you some more interesting things that we can do with this information.